Ever since the launch of the first batch of Starlink satellites in 2018, SpaceX has made great progress in keeping up its promises and building a next-generation communications network. With now over 2,000 Starlink satellites covering the entire Earth, the commercialization process has begun. Ultimately, this would require SpaceX to have a different skill set, namely selling Starlink services to consumers. SpaceX at its core has been a hardware innovation company for the past 20 years since its founding, and now it's time to transition and improve its consumer-facing capabilities. Elon Musk is doing just fine selling Starlink by himself, but ultimately, for a company to succeed, it needs soldiers to man all positions such as sales, customer support, operations, maintenance, and marketing. But of course, what's been highly discussed in the headline these days is not Starlink's businesses, rather it is Starlink's role in the current Russian-Ukraine war. Fundamentally, Elon Musk and Cole made two positions very clear. The first, Starlink will help make information accessible to Ukrainians in the war zone. And secondly, Starlink will not block Russian news websites. Elon Musk has made his point clear as a free speech absolutist. There is no best way to explain these messy subjects, so let me give it a crack and try to explain it in a structured way. I will focus plainly on the businesses and technology side of Starlink. Before we dive into this, let me also first of all say that I am no military expert and I will try to keep this piece as apolitical as possible. Under the current fog of war, I take all reporting of the war with a pinch of salt, whether it's from the Russian side, the Ukraine side, or from the West. Well, first of all, what role do satellites play in a war? There is no underestimating importance of satellites in modern warfare. Generally, I think satellites provide three distinct functionalities in a war. Reconnaissance, spatial intelligence, and communications. In the first functionality, satellites provide imagery information to participants of war, reporting on the movement of army, war equipment, and resources. Spatial intelligence gives the participant of war information necessary to direct missiles to hit the right target with precision. This is why in a modern war that involves the United States, the US is generally able to hit military targets with low civilian casualties. Communications is the ability to communicate with one another through calls, the internet, and more. Now, what do Starlinks do? Modern satellite communication services follow a simple three-step processes. The internet signal is first of all delivered via fiber to a large antenna on the ground, which then moves the signal via radio waves up to our satellite. The signal will then come back down to your home or office and is captured by an antenna outside of your home that's aligned with the satellite. This is of course why Starlink requires a $2,500 satellite dish to work properly. Starlink's major innovation and moat is SpaceX's capability to send hundreds of satellites to space at a low cost and its occupation of lower Earth orbit at around 300 to 500 kilometers from Earth's surface, which in turn reduces Starlink's internet latency to 40 and 50 milliseconds, which is pretty amazing. This latency is a tiny bit slower than DSL, cable, and fiber internet services providers, but much faster than Viasat and HughesNet latency at over 600 milliseconds. Starlink is hence primarily a communications tool now helping in the conflict. The Russian side naturally does not like this and is jamming signals from Starlink. Still, what does it mean to send Starlink to Ukraine? Well, basically what SpaceX currently is sending are ground stations that are able to receive signals and hence access the internet from Starlink. Every terminal can provide Starlink internet to Ukrainians who receive them. Lastly, let's talk about the implications. From SpaceX's perspective, there are both pros and cons. By the action of sending Starlink terminals to Ukraine, Elon Musk has demonstrated SpaceX Starlink satellite as a powerful agent in this conflict. I'm sure all the congressmen and women who saw what Starlink is capable of will show more support to Elon Musk's space endeavors in the future through NASA's fundings on SpaceX vehicle development. Secondly, though Starlink is mainly used for communications purposes, SpaceX's ability to send thousands of satellites to the sky at low cost presented a significant military intelligence advantage for the United States. I won't be surprised if SpaceX has more government defense contracts in the future. However, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. The Russian-Ukrainian war and how it unfolded in every arena of contest is being watched very closely all around the world. The Russians and the Chinese will, in my opinion, seek to match SpaceX capabilities to not lose out. This is what's called an unrestricted war. Due to the interconnectedness of our world today, all civilians and commercial capabilities are no longer restricted. 
Putting aside the moral takes on right and wrong, modern warfare is not at all restricted to military conflict. Oftentimes, the financial, communications, commercial wars are much more insufferable. To be frank, as much as we'd love to see ways for these big and powerful countries to work together to build and improve Starlink's amazing technologies, it is definitely possible that we're headed towards a more fractionalized world with big powers contesting and competing with one another. Whichever way it goes, SpaceX has made itself relevant once again to the future of our world. What do you think?